Once again, I have to make the disclaimer that I'm going off of the subtitled version. This was not by choice. There's only one theater that's playing this film here in Salt Lake, and the only showing I was able to get to after work was the subtitled showing. So, let me make it clear. I am not one of those annoying purists that automatically think subs are better. I just take what I can get. This film comes to us from director Hiromasa Yonabayashi, who previously directed The Secret World of Arietti and has been a key animator on countless other Ghibli projects. Right from the start, you can immediately identify this as a Ghibli film, since the art and character design is much of what you would usually see in a majority of the Ghibli canon that was brought to the US. As such, you can expect to see some high-quality hand-drawn animation. That said, there were only a few things that stuck out to me visually while watching this film. The first thing was the design contrast between the respective worlds of Anna, our main character, and the mysterious Marnie, as they decided to go for a clear East meets West aesthetic. The second thing I noticed was a subtler animation choice in regards to Anna's eye color, which is a bright blue at the start of the film, but then turns dark after she's encountered Marnie. Without giving too much away, I feel it's something that subtly conveys the themes of isolation and the wish of our main character to have a normal life, her bright blue, obviously European eyes being only one of the points of contention, as well as her eventual acceptance of who she is and her circumstances. Granted, I could be reading too deep into things. The third thing I noticed was how the film will straight up mess with your heads, and not just in terms of the narrative, but also visually. You were constantly made to question just what's going on inside Anna's head, and the way the film shows it to you also makes it difficult to distinguish fantasy from reality, even to the point where you aren't sure which is which for the most part, at least that's the interpretation that I took from it. Speaking of which, the story was a bit slow to start, as it takes a while before we get to the actual inciting incident, Anna's first encounter with Marnie. As such, it took a while for the main character to become likable, as she's first presented as a barely emotive shut-in. On top of that, there are some side characters that, while somewhat appealing, felt ultimately unnecessary to the film. Granted, they don't stick around for very long, but I get the feeling that they're there because they were prominent in the novel this film is based on. FYI, I haven't read it, but I can assume that it wasn't initially set in Japan, since it's a novel from the 60s that was first published in England. Overall, the film looks great, and it tells a fairly emotional story that will pull you in if you give it a chance. That said, the mess-with-your-head narrative may be a bit off-putting to people who are used to the more imaginative films produced by Studio Ghibli. If you're looking for an animated film that's different from the norm, but still has a Ghibli charm, then I recommend this film. Just be forewarned, it doesn't have as much of the charm as, say, Spirited Away or Howl's Moving Castle, as it keeps its design fairly grounded, which I think works better to the strength of the story they're trying to tell. As I mentioned earlier, I can't comment on the dub of this film since I'm not able to view it currently due to my work schedule and the fact that there's only one theater showing it, and really, it was just not in the cards in this case. All of that said, When Marnie Was There gets a 4.5 out of 5. Why 4.5 instead of 5 out of 5 like many people would expect of a Ghibli film? Well, like I said, it's not as imaginative as some of the other Ghibli films. Again. The story is a bit grounded, but it was also pretty slow to start, which is why I'm not giving it the full rating. It's a good film, it's not perfect, it has some issues with it, and especially after having seen a film like The Tale of Princess Kaguya, it felt like a bit of a letdown. At least that's how it felt to me. So yeah, that's why it gets a 4.5 out of 5. So that's it for this episode of Romney's Reviews. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.